Exactly. Yeah, finding yeah. out that finding out that scabbers the whole time. Yes. The whole time. Now, one thing I Get will say, here. I will say about scabbers and another um, deleted scene. Um, that this is a deleted scene that we weren't going to touch on a little bit later, but also difference between the book is that in um, when they went, uh, I forget what the name of the places they were going. Harry wasn't able to get a permission slip. He asked Miss McGonagall. She couldn't sign oh, it. Oh, I remember that. They yep. all went to do some shopping. Well, Ron came back with this little trinket. Um, starts with an S. He came back with this little trinket that told you when, like, sketchy or untrustworthy people were around. And it was always going off when oh. Harry was around his friends. And Harry thought, like, oh, this thing is broke. It keeps going off. Yeah. Well, we find out later um, it, was scabbers. it was scabbers. That's and crazy. And the thing was going off God, because see scabbers. See thing right in that front of was, your face. That yeah. was, you don't even um, see. And I, I, honestly, I don't recall if that was in the book or if it was something they added for the movie. But I'm 100% certain it was a deleted scene from the movie. It was this little thing that he gave to Harry. Um, and they also made a point of saying, look, Ron's family didn't have a lot of money. And the fact that yep. he bought Harry a gift because Harry couldn't go. But so so a deleted scene was that, you know, uh, and, and you didn't know. Like, nobody, th I don't think, unless you read the book, you would you, there's no way, no, look, nobody thought anything of Scabbers. Don't, don't no. tell yeah. me, no. don't tell me that you watched the movies, but didn't read, read the book, book and, you knew. and you thought for two seconds that, oh, Harry's but rat must be something The only sketchy. way is you'd have to put it together because of, uh, uh, cause just because they're turning into werewolves and stuff. Yeah, yeah but, but even then, that, no, that's the only yeah. way you can maybe, yep. maybe but, you know, together. and everybody. But yeah. even then, it would be by the end of the movie when Scabbers. Yeah, because they all off. had their familiar or their pet. You and know, then they're they, like, uh, why is they? Why is he aiming for the that one? Rest? The one thing that 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 is interesting that I found to be, is that you know, uh, McGonagall sh sh um, shifted into a cat that we saw that. Yep. And then we saw um, the professor go into a werewolf. We saw a serious black turn into a dog. Like a wolfhound, yeah. So we saw all these people um, shapeshift, I believe they call it, maybe it's not, shapeshifting in the movies into animals, and then going back to their regular selves, where Scabbers' character, <laughs> Wormtail, <laughs> Trying to look like a rat, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So they very much very made him. Fitting. They very much made him look like a rat yeah. in the movie. Yeah, and then looks like he it. was a rat. So that I found to be that, that I found smart. to be interesting. Um, you know, but the, like when I, the, his look, and not to be judgmental on his look, but he he didn't look like a very trustworthy yeah, person. They did it for a reason. They knew what they were doing with that makeup and whatnot. But um, I loved the way. I really loved the way. Uh, Prisoner of Azkaban ended. It was a ha you know, look, Buckbeak wasn't off the hook, but he flew away yeah. yep. with Sirius Black. Yep. Um, I, Harry was glad that he learned the truth. And uh, another lesson that we'll get into later, but I mean, he learned the truth. And even though people still thought Sirius was, Sirius was guilty, um, uh, Harry knew all that least. Sirius cared about was that Harry knew the truth. Yeah. And uh, Sirius got yeah, away, and Buckbeak got to fly away, mm -hmm. and everything was good. Um, in the books, they did. Um, it, it, they did. Um, there were, the difference w with the book is there was there was like t I believe there was twelve hippogriffs when they went out there to train, and that scene um, uh, was was shortened down yeah, quite a, down bit. a bit. So I, I believe one. there was twelve hippogriffs. Um, they they definitely highlighted Malfoy's injury more in the book, and there was some other things. But it was a, it was a, it was a bigger training session with the hippogriff. I believe they said that Harry didn't like fly it all around like joyously like yeah. he did. Um, but visually, um, it was very entertaining that he did. Yeah. So um, that's one difference between the book and the movie that I felt was done well because. I really loved watching Harry fly around on that hippogriff. Yeah. I thought it was cool. Well, but you had um, a never ending story. Yeah, That's right. So definitely yeah. definitely luck dragon vibes. But um no, Prisoner of Azkaban was good. Um Goblet of Fire. Oh, um boom. Goblet of Fire was like to me was the funniest of the movies. Yeah, that felt the most like a coming of age. It well, was the funniest of the movies with the all the things the teenagers were going through. Yeah. But then it ended with Cedric dying, and it was yeah. like it went from being like this. Oh my God, like I totally can relate. And yeah. that was another look. The directors did such a good job, and 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 I, and I get it. I, I read. I 
if I ever say the directors did a good job and you're like, no, JK did a good job of, of writing it, yeah. please he, understand. He still has to interpret. He has please to interpret, understand yeah, that that's it, what yes. I mean. He's got but a wow, did, the pages. They like, really, yeah. they really nailed the teenage experience oh, did they ever. of angst. And yep. I did like, and I, I will say that, um, and for, for you younger people out there, we're, I'm 42, and so the experience at Hogwarts is a cell phone-less experience. And yes. even what, what year did that come out, Andrew? Uh, November of 05. So in 05, I will November say 18th, that so most right 12, they were, you know, they were, you know, not 12 anymore when Goblet of Fire came out. But most teenagers in that time frame, 04, 05, weren't walking around with cell phones. No, I don't think they it had was, It was, it was no. more of a, like, I had a, a cell phone, but it was more of an adult thing. I think a yeah. few, I think when I was working at Best Buy, they made like a kid's cell phone that had like four. They used to, yeah, it used it's to like be a cell mom, phone. Yeah, it had four, it had four buttons and an emergency school. button in the middle, so you could call yeah. like program, mom, dad, whatever. Yep. Um, but I don't think kids had cell phones, so the interactions that they had, passing notes and the whispering, and yeah. tell him I said this. Like the, that it thing. felt very. You tell him, 80s. but this person tell this. Yeah. It. That was like the first time that it sucked me in as like, this is something that I can really relate to. Yep. You know, like it started mm -hmm. off as a kid's movie and then they're growing. And then, man, like some of those experiences they had. It's like, they you've, you've they lived it. They yeah. nailed it. 100%. They absolutely well, you, nailed it. You look at Harry, he's well, like, at this time, like, he kind of starts on the low because he somehow got in the goblet of fire. So everyone's like, this guy's cheating. Well, then he wins a couple contests, and he's, you know, back to being Mr. Popular again. And then he's got to try and ask a girl out to the dance. And, like, yeah. he just he just can't. And he finally finds the one he wants yeah. to, works up the courage. I already said yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then he has to find someone else. Same with Ron. And then he's got... Well, some of you have probably been there where you get the hand-me-down tux that you wear. The tux is great. <laughs> I look, look like, like a my giant great, doily. What did he say? His great aunt Tessie? Oh, I smell I like her. my great aunt Tessie. It smells like Tessie, too. Oh, no. And then, it, like, they show the behind the scenes of then Emma walking down in this beautiful dress. Mm -hmm. Like, and you could finally see, like, Ron, like, going, oh, man, I missed out on that like, one. She was, that version of her was here the whole time, <laughs> you know? The classic, you know, 80s yeah, tomboy turns thing. into the... The hottest girl. Yeah, well, she put her hair down and took her glasses off, and all of a sudden she was a ten. I don't know what happened. <laughs> How yeah. that happen? But what happened? Well, what news and notes did you have? Yeah. About well, the your, the your big thing. That, yeah, at. the big thing I had about four was that it it almost felt like a break from a lot of the the darkness for most of the movie. It was a lot of fun and everything, and <laughs> and we didn't really get you know the darkness you know till the end with Cedric obviously. And the great thing going into that was. I knew that Robert Pattinson had a role in this movie. I didn't know how long it was, and I didn't know what happened to his character because I think uh, I sent these guys a Vanity Fair uh, YouTube video of him commenting on a bunch of his roles, and he never said in there how long his role with Harry Potter was. I thought he was like a big part of the series. I didn't know he was in for just one movie. So when he came out, flashback. we were all like, yeah, it's vengeance, it's Batman. You know, we all went nuts for it. And then when he when he was tragically taken from us, I like picking my jaw up off the table. I'm like, that's it. That's all we get because I didn't I didn't put it together that Robert Pattinson was kind of just starting yeah. to get big with his acting career at that point. So you, like we talk about how much fun it was, and then you bring it up then too. Then right at the end, we see that Dumbledore is back, or not Dumbledore. I'm sorry, Voldemort. Voldemort. Yeah. Voldemort. yeah. Voldemort is back, and, 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 so, and Harry and, did and kind of hold his own. A, a, he held his own a little bit with Voldemort. With Voldemort, yeah. yeah. And that's got, it, got enough space. Yeah, and that's the one thing that I'll, I'll just say here real quick is that I felt like for a lot of the the later movies after this one, I, I kept waiting for our group to kind of realize their power and realize their strength because I'm like, well, the Harry just hung with Voldemort there in in number four. I'm like couple of series in you know he's gonna wipe him out this isn't gonna be a challenge but then we saw Voldemort grow more powerful as well yeah, so we, that was a good saw, balance and we saw how he had to get that power and everything yep. and then, but then also we saw in the next couple of movies which we'll touch base on obviously of how like some certain B-I-T-C-H was trying to hold that back with not allowing them to have uh, certain defenses. Anyways, most. but back to this. But yeah, then we saw a big death to a key character yeah. in with, uh, our, with our boy Rob, yeah, Big and, Rob. 
And that, like, so it was such a fun, hip movie. Like, oh, we're cringing for all the right reasons. I like, oh, they can't get a date, get all this, yeah. only for the end to be so dark. And you, you see Harry, and he's crying, and, like, the dad thinks that his son won. Or oh, that was winner. tough. That was and tough. And then he realizes that, and, and then the whole time we're seeing – uh, Moody going like that the whole freaking time, and finally we figure out that he's not who he says he is either. So a whole big long drawn out, you know, shape shifting again with that. Yep. And uh, who was the uh, the professor of the dark arts in this one? Do you guys remember? Because again, I yeah, full I disclosure, it, it I only changed. watched them once, and I know they changed every time. They changed it like every movie. But I, oh well, yeah, it was Moody. It was Moody. It was, yeah, I was, was okay. Say it was Moody. And then, yeah, yeah. Or, or it was. I'm sorry. It was Moody. It was. Uh, it was Barty Crouch yeah. Jr. So was it number was two one, that yeah. had the guy who was like pretending? Yeah, to Lockhart. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I love Lockhart. I forgot to mention that we were talking about the second. Oh, that's why I said he got knocked out. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, I could have cast that spell. No. That was, yeah. He was so great. Wow, this is amazing. What do you call this on the way up? Because they took all of his memories. Lockhart's so, yeah. character was 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 but yeah, pretty back, special. Back then to four, but yeah, it was yeah. the whole. Once again, they they had another, you know, snake in there, and they we saw the, the replay of like, when they're the whole Congress or what. So we got the first time we got to see what kind of like government or that the wizards kind of have parliament yeah. or how they how they had justice in yep. within their world compared yep. to ours so it was yeah. kind of nice I, to see that you know another th thing that i thought they did well um along with you know they, they added the comedy of the awkward teenage experience but the other thing that they did is they just helped you remember that these are teenagers that was, you know that it's was like key. in yeah. the first one it's like okay they're young wizards and witches and they're young wizards and witches and like look they've you don't know what their responsibilities are mm. they're but like this reminds us take a step back even though you have a heavy topic they're still experiencing the same things that everybody else is and you wonder like okay are the muggle kid you know the muggle kids are going through what muggle kids go through but maybe you know the witches and and wizards you know experience different things and it's like no they're teenagers just like everybody else um and and the other interesting thing and one of the one of the recurring themes um that we learn from all the comments and that you just pick up is that each character you know is, is somebody relatable for somebody who's watching you very know? much so like there's people out there watching who look your school had a victor crumb who got to get any girl he wanted and your school had a a cedric diggory who was the dashing oh, guy and super lucky. charming <laughs> you know and in your school had somebody who you know couldn't build up yeah. the courage and, and it was like everybody related to to somebody you know um i oh god I, you know, I remember freshman year, I, I was a little bit, uh, I, I was, and these guys have heard this story, I was kind of a friend-zoned guy from about birth until <laughs> 16 years of age. Summer between my sophomore and my Still junior year, I got a haircut, I got some new clothes, I got a car, I saved up all my money from work, got a decent car, and it dragon. was this weird thing, no. <laughs> It was this weird thing where I went from like not being able to get a date because I was like always friend zoned to like then I could get dates. But so like my freshman and sophomore year of high school was like going to dances and like, oh, just just ask her to dance, man. <laughs> just do it, it. It wasn't as much like before driver's licenses where I where I grew up, you freshmen and sophomores only really went to dances if they got asked by older kids, I think like homecoming and prom was more like for juniors and seniors. Yep. So, um, but like, I didn't have to ask somebody to a dance in this capacity, but just being at dances, I think we started having dances in sixth, seventh and eighth grade. And man, if some of that stuff wasn't relatable, oh, like, yeah. Oh, just was, all you gotta do is ask if she's so, so what, accurate. what if she says no. But the thing is like, you know, a long time ago, there was no cell phones. It's not like you could DM somebody like, hey, do you want to go to the dance? And they're like, no. Yeah, maybe they can still show their yeah. friends, but it's not like public humiliation. I'm telling you, we went to the dances with my group of friends, and there was girls. And unless all her friends already got asked to dance, um, there was one girl I had a huge crush on, like my whole freshman year. 
And like I remember being a t- just just ask her to dance. Just she's just what's what's the harmony? And then she's surrounded by like five girls, and then everybody else is watching. And if you go over and ask, and they say no, you fall on your face. Boy. You gotta do the walk of shame back to where your boys are, and your yeah. boys are giving you stuff. Her friends are all laughing, and it was like, uh, God, I was kind of. I don't know, man. It I was, I, I was, Dave, we have a surprise for you. I wish. Yeah. She's right over She's there. right over there. Yeah. 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 Right right and I think more times than not, <laughs> I just um, I just didn't ask, you know? Yeah. You just didn't ask. And the thing is, and for, for those of you who haven't been to a like a school dance where it's just like, you know, if you go to like prom and homecoming and something like this, it's just assumed you're going to slow dance with your date. At school dances, like just... You know, maybe once a month we had a school yep. dance. You didn't necessarily go with date. You obviously had boyfriends, girlfriends. So when the s- slow song came on, you just had to ask somebody to dance. And if you got rejected, like time number one, like that was it. <laughs> so if you kind of had crushes on like that two was your girls shot, or three man. girls, maybe you could wait till the next set of songs. Ooh. Look, there was always that one guy, and we had that guy. I'm also not going to say his name. That would like go down. You want to dance? No. no. And they no. go right to the. Oh. They, go, they go right. Every school had one of those guys. I thought he had Mr. Cutsies. Just no fear. Like, do you want to dance? No. Okay. Cool. Hey, would you like to dance? And of course, the next girl can't say yes unless like there's some you know vindictive behavior there because the other girl just shut him down or maybe she the, just thinks he's nice the dynamics of teenagers and him. dances yeah. and relationships and i'm so glad they based it around a dance because the the thing with the dance is is there's a level of immediate or impending pressure yeah you're right, right? there you in can front have of it. like relationship yeah. stories and how awkward that is but there's nothing quite like the pressure of a dance there's a ticking clock you have to ask time's ticking <laughs> oh my god uh you know you ask somebody and they say no or whatever you want to go with somebody else um I was yeah. the I came on the losing end of that my senior year I had a girl from a different town who I had a huge crush on didn't know she had a thing for me asked me to my senior homecoming i said oh. yes i couldn't have been more excited now she heard some not so savory rumors about me dating multiple people at the same time <laughs> this guy uh it's anyhow <laughs> she went and asked somebody, somebody else, else. A guy and, I knew, and we from saw a, that happen. A guy that I knew from a different school. Once he confirmed, she canceled on me. Oof. And to make it even worse, but wait, there's more. I already had a date, and it was like it was like karma. I yep. had a date to the dance. It was just kind of like casual, like eh, whatever. I didn't have anybody to go to. Nice girl. We went to her school's dance in De Pere, and then she was going to come to Little Shoots, but then. Chris, I won't say her last name. Christy asked me to go. I'm like, yeah. And so then I had to say no to the other girl, which I did feel very bad. It was a whole conundrum. Say yes to Christy. Christy cancels on me, goes with Ian. And I can't go ask Debbie to come. I feel this story's better if I say names. I can't yeah. go ask Debbie to now come back to the dance. And I yeah, think you I, already you know who I, th- I think I told my mom what happened. And she was like, well, that's what you get. That's what you deserve. Like stone no cold, remorse. Stone cold, stone cold mom. That's what you get for canceling on the other girl. Like my mom did not, and my mom like didn't really get into my dating or anything. So when I was watching these dance scenes, think about that stories that started when you were in high school. When I was, (laughs) yeah, Jesus. When I was watching those dance scenes, it was so, man. Yeah, we've all been there, man. So it was so relatable, and I feel like when I went through this whole series. One and two, I was like, meh. Part three, you guys saw me. I was like, okay, this is funny. And then all of a sudden, it became relatable to me. Regardless if it was at Hogwarts, if it's witches and wizards, now this movie was so relatable to me because I had been in their shoes. I had been there where it's like, I'm so nervous to ask. I'm so, oh, but what if somebody else asks? Oh, it's too late. But what if this guy asks the girl you want to go with? And it was so relatable. And, and I feel like I all we all went to comedy. We went to a high school relatable. during a time where that's 
relatable. Now, with if somebody who's look, the, the same emotions are very relatable. Mm -hmm. But if a teenager now who has a cell phone, you can fire off a DM or you know jump in, you know hit them up on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, well, and ask them to a dance. Yahoo Messenger back in the <laughs> yeah, day. AOL, all right. <laughs> Got all my Mom, CDs. Get off the phone. I'm trying to ask a girl to but a dance. But I feel like the experience is a little bit different now. The same yeah. emo look, and and don't get me wrong. The same nervousness of should oh, I walk up to somebody? Kids today, it's just we've all typed out that message in our text message. Oh, do I hit send? Uh, she'll I have hit, it forever. She I can I show hit, everybody. Do I hit send? It's us as adults. Do I hit send? Do I hit send? And then if she gets it and like uh, doesn't want to go, like the, the equivalent is like showing the message to her friends as far as getting shut down. So I'm not trying to take away those experiences from kids today. It just, it just yeah. the fact that they were at today, Hogwarts and today it's, you see the message has been open and read and they're like, oh, it's been read for three uh, days. Yeah. Red receipts. So uh, no, I just did. <laughs> we, just, we just did find out that the iPhone uh, upcoming soon with the new iOS. Yeah, update you can pull them is back. It's going to give you the unsend for like yeah. 15 minutes. I think I thought it was like 15 or 30 minutes. That's it's, a lifesaver. Hit the message and then start your timer, bro. You got a minute to undo that message. 39 <laughs> seconds. Do you still want to send? Down. Oh, it's either I yeah. quit my job or I go in yet tomorrow. That's yeah. not the send. Yeah. But that like I, that. I, I, you know. I, uh, I know that's a long, drawn-out uh, talk for you guys, which you've gotten used yeah. to by me for now. But I did really feel like this was the first time where this this movie became relatable to yeah. me. And so often in the comments, people are like, oh, I, I related to this and I related to that. And I didn't relate to anything in the first few movies. And then all of a sudden, I was like, that's me. Yeah. You know, that's well, me. You know, the other big thing beyond the dance was we actually saw some friction with our characters. Mm -hmm. You know, we saw... Harry and uh, you know, kind of giving it back a little bit, and we saw uh, we saw Weasley kind of having a little bit of attitude with Harry, and we we saw some of that well, friction. Well, so in those it was, and that's, and that's hormones know, just, uh, with just, teenagers. Yeah, yeah. Just, I just you know, guys yeah. going back and forth at each other. But yep. I just wanted to get that in yeah. before we jump. I think into the you know, I, I do, I do, yeah. and of course, yeah. this was for as much as I like talking about the dance. This is when we saw that Voldemort was a hundred percent back. Yep. So this is, even though they didn't believe him right away, this is the start of where things got real. This yep. wasn't Tom Riddle. This wasn't, um, a, a you know, Sirius or, Black yeah. or a rumor. Yep. This was, here's Voldemort. He's back. And we also found out that, look, this guy's no mercy. He he, he took out Cedric. He's a teenage yep. kid. I mean, that's the one thing that we learned. Here's a teenage kid, and he didn't think twice didn't even to take blink. out just a no. teenage kid. And it wasn't like, look, here was the, kind of the ruthless thing about that is, look, we all knew he wanted to go after Potter, right? But what, what, this is like, the, I, I guess I didn't like really think about this until I went back and watched it the second time. I'm like, what beef did Voldemort have with with Diggory? Yeah. No, you know, I don't know. I and, and maybe they say in the books, maybe. Um, Maybe Diggory was, was like oh, a, a mud blood, or, or uh, you know, he wasn't born to magic parents. That I don't recall. Mm. But I was like, it, it's got to be something like that. Because I'm like, what beef did Vol yeah. Voldemort just well, took I, him out? I love how you said that about teenagers. Didn't he try to kill Potter as a as a kid, as a baby? Yeah, yeah, he yeah so he he's going to be ruthless yeah. to even some. But no, he he had the. But thing he had the reason Potter, to go yeah. after I, Potter. I, I get yeah. that. Diggory so was so just like, all right, we're going to go after extra, him. Yeah. Yeah. So totality. this was really, um, you know, uh, like we said, we 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 saw things get a little bit more mature in the in the Chamber of Secrets. Um, we saw them even get more mature in um, Prisoner Azkaban. of Azkaban. But the Goblet of Fire, look, Voldemort's back. He killed one of Harry's friends. And somebody, look, he wasn't one of Harry's tight friends, but we saw that they were very cordial to each other. They yep. helped each other out yes, they in did. the tournament. Yep. Um, you know, uh, Harry tried helping him out with the dragon thing. You know, uh, Cedric helped him out with getting the egg open and having to go into the pool, uh, which was a fun, awkward scene. With I didn't know Harry like was gonna have like abs and some delts. Yeah, and he's you know? he's in the bathtub. And I'm then, like, this is and a then little Myrtle awkward. Comes over. They did. Uh, you know yeah. what? They did get a little adult um, with me, and and I I was a little bit more uncomfortable the second time I watched it. Even yeah. when <laughs> she's like. They're probably all adults. So she's like, "Ooh, the bubbles are about to disappear," yeah. and I'm like, 
whoa. I know what that means. Like yes. anybody who's taking a bubble bath, you know, when you're under the water, you can't see anything with the bubbles. <laughs> and she's all like, these bubbles are about to, the bubbles are disappearing here. It's like, and it's like still whoa, a teenager like, here. Uh. Like, but look, look, you put two teenagers alone in a hot tub. Alive or ghost. Yeah. That part, allegedly. Oh, yeah. God, alleged, Hashtag alleged. ghost. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Uh, but so, no, so um, Goblet of Fire was, yeah. was fun, but it was, you know, Voldemort's back. These are relatable teenagers, uh, and shit just got serious. So, now that, well, what do you want to say? Oh, I was just going to, I was just going to transition to five. I was say, just, yeah. that's exactly what I was going to do, is like, yeah. now that Voldemort's back, you need an Order of the Phoenix to get right up there with yep. them. So, and, and we got introduced to the Order of Phoenix. Now, we had to figure there had to be some kind of magical order or group of individuals who take care of things but we just got introduced to a whole new cast of characters and again more tremendous actors who we've seen in things um i forget the gentleman's name because he didn't have a very big role but i i recognized him immediately from layer cake with daniel craig i'm like i know that guy he's awesome but uh yes yeah, so we got introduced to a whole new order and like right off the jump you kind of had the feeling like Okay, these guys are getting a little bit long in the tooth. Maybe it's time for a new Order of the Phoenix to kind of come about. And Harry showed his excitement with wanting to with wanting to fight, and there was a lot of uh, resistance there from the Order. So, again, this is the one where I feel like six was kind of the setup to to the big finish, as we might want to call it. But this one really kind of put everybody kind of in their place and what they had to do and and. It, kind of they had to realize their own strengths and powers i guess to to battle the and know. it also gave us the most hated villain of the oh, series uh, dolores that, umbridge she's got a lot of cats oh, and i wonder you know when i went <laughs> back when great. i went back and i watched all the fan theories and all the other reactions and everything i'm like was it just me who really hated her and people that, everybody and everybody was people were like she, uh, she's she arguably more great? disliked then Voldemort. Yeah. Least, look, Voldemort's just the bad he's, dude he's all the around. Evil guy. He's yeah. the evil guy, and he's straightforward evil. Mm -hmm. and you know, Harry's coming out saying he's back. He's back, and they're out, they're running the presses, yep. saying he's it's not there. You got Umbridge there, like trying to teach him defense. But by the book, it's like how are they going to be able? To, well, they they it's shouldn't like, need. Yeah, it was all theoretical. Like, Come on, like how yep. is that going to help anything? But that. So sometimes I wonder. This just popped in my head. Maybe she was a, maybe she was a gateway to having Her Harry become the leader that he became. Yeah, well, it wasn't for her being a, that stone cold bitch. It did, it forced Harry to for actually Neville to find to the Neville secret to room. Find the room, yeah. And then them to start training, training and just getting everyone on, getting oh, everyone up to par. Yeah, you just yeah. I mean, everybody played their role in these movies. Yeah to making them who they were. I feel like Andrew you know? sometimes brings up things that I haven't thought about and I really think about it. Just, I just she's, you know, there's, just like, there's just so no, many, honestly, and look, that's why you have to watch these things like five times. There's so many <laughs> things, there's so many things and I only, look, the movies that I really love, I, I watch a lot of times. In, in a movie like this, even watching a second time, I picked up so much, but I guarantee, like, I got to go back and watch it a yep. third and a fourth well, and a it fifth. It did feel like we watched it a few times. And I want to watch, I want to watch it with, uh, I <laughs> some technical difficulties along the way, <laughs> you know. But, um, so. <laughs> but I want to watch it with my nephews now. So yeah. my, it, ironically, ironically, I always gave my brothers a hard time that Lord of the Rings was nerdy, and I watched Lord of the Rings and loved it. I loved Lord of the Rings, and action-wise, I felt like Lord of the Rings better than Potter. But I got to be honest with you, and Quinn, you might not like hearing this as a story. I just as somebody who like really values like the the motivation and just these lessons i think harry potter is better than lord of the rings all right let's go to america's I poll think, uh, oh, well I let think, it be no, 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 just just, no, just, no, 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 just no, follow it's, along it's, no. the Every, action i think i think lord of the rings is a bigger it's look it's obviously a bigger blockbuster mm. and from an entertainment standpoint like what am i more entertained watching lord of the rings 
substance. I mean, it's. I think it's your heart. You're gonna you're hard pressed to find anything that compares to Harry Potter. But it's so ironic that I didn't want to watch Lord of the Rings movies, even though both my brothers were like, "You gotta watch them. You yeah. gotta watch them." My brother had like my nephew watching Lord of the Rings at three, which I still think is sketchy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But whatever, it'll make him make it. Yeah. Uh, Lord, Lord of the world. Put it on his. Side. But my hey, brother is still kind of like on the edge. Oh, of he's still Potter, on the fence about, about Potter. Potter. About Potter. And this is where I'm saying, like, there's like this separation of like yeah. sci-fi Star and fantasy Wars, people. Trek, like I said, yeah. the Star Wars guys think like they're the cool guys, yeah. but like Star Trek, you're like yeah, nerdy, you know? Oh, judo chops, yeah, right? Right? <laughs> right? Oh you're my god, about Captain Kirk just <laughs> picking up aliens on every <laughs> alien chicks on every planet. Yep. Um, but you know, my brother hasn't watched it, but I would, I would really like. Um, one of my nephews is 15, and the other one is. Um, Eleven and God, I would love for these movies to come back on the theaters right now. Yeah, I'd be able to because I would them totally too. take my nephews 100%. to this. Um, but um, you know, it's it's interesting that you bring that up, Andrew, because it's in, and we'll get into lessons later. But her character forced them to overcome adversities and find ways around their obstacles yep. and things like that. I I hated her. I I oh, hated her with and a I think passion. You know, one of the things that we were introduced to in Order of the Phoenix was corruption. Yep. So we knew there was corruption and control from the yeah, ministry. Right from the ministry they in the failed trial. To believe in the yeah. ministry right from the trial. They sent the Dementors. And look, yep. there was some sketchy stuff going on. And they changed the time of the court. So uh, so Dumbledore oh, yeah, couldn't, so to Dumbledore uh, couldn't Dumbledore. be there. Yeah. So look, this is Good like thing he was eight hours We're early. seeing corruption <laughs> right away. And then they gave corruption a voice with umbrage and she was so rude and so condescending and look i think everybody's had some sort of adult or somebody in their life who acts like they're this authority figure but you know they're just an evil person deep down we had an interesting conversation um about similar ish stuff before this started and just about how like people who are supposed to be in positions where they're doing good can let either power or their own you know personal beliefs kind of um kind of take that position and just turn it into a negative thing and i i just couldn't i couldn't stand her i just could not stand oh, it's just her that character face. and just just the things that the she stupid did little giggle she would do you know they and i and i the, the fact that oh we don't need to why would you need to actually be able to perform these spells you're just gonna learn about it's it and theory. Like, well yeah. uh, you know and it was almost like she knew you know an interesting thing of watching it the second time, you start to wonder if, like, okay, is this about control or was she on Voldemort's side? And you know what I'm saying? Because, like, mm. some people, just they just want to have control. Yep. I just want to have control for the sake of having control. You can't do this because I say so. I don't think this is right. And part of me feels like she's just a bitch, and <laughs> that's what she wanted. But it's hard to, th like, okay, maybe she purposely wanted to suppress the kid's power. So... You know, yeah. Voldemort could come into power and take over, but it's like, well, if she works for the ministry, you wouldn't think they want, you know, but you, yeah. I don't know. It was just... I think she was just, just power hungry and following the orders so that she could maintain that power. Yeah, you because know. she wanted to take over the school, you know, probably in the end, because, boy, the amount of pleasure that she took from seeing the kids have to write oh, yeah, and then and it's then it's cutting their the kids it's cutting their write. hand and she had that that and she's that aura of joy about canning this. the yeah. teachers and there was yeah. look there was a lot of interesting stuff so she she canned a beloved teacher um she got the kids you know the, she got the house of slytherin to be snitches and stuff like yep. that um she used a potion that you know even even snape didn't like her oh you used up all this potion yeah, all the on, truth on, telling on, on the, the truth serum um I just, you know, she started all the rules on the wall. I mean, that was a funny thing. The janitor guy is oh, going to yeah, keep putting, 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 him up. Up. Putting, uh, uh, putting him up. I mean, she was just insufferable. But the, the I thought this was the movie that really sucked me in. Mm. This was the movie that sucked me in. Prisoner of Azkaban, I'm like, okay, this is good. Goblet of Fire, I'm like, okay, I can I can relate to this. Yep. This is These are good movies. I can relate to this. Um, Order of the Phoenix just, I mean, man, did this movie suck me in because there's the symbolism in this movie, and we'll come back to this in a little bit when we just go over just the lessons of the movies. The symbolism in this in this movie, I thought, was just incredible. Yeah. And so for me, it was a good story about how, look, there used to be this army that was you know trying to battle evil yep. and they're kind of getting old and they're getting taken out we need to have a new, new army yep. and this is what 
this was is that basically they could have called it the new order of the phoenix and we saw a really good plot corruption disbelief yep. um and corruption coming from places of power which is hard to overcome right like it's, mm -hmm. it's look that's the ministry they're the top what do you do the when final say what do you yeah. do when they're when when they're corrupt so i thought this was such a good movie it showed harry really coming into his own as far as learning that he was a powerful wizard and so many other things and this was the movie that really really turned it around for me the first time watching when i went back and watched the second time i went yeah, back yeah, and watched yeah. with it, it was it was yeah. definitely when i watched all these movies the first time um once i started getting into it it was fun it was better the second time because I went into it with like this, okay, I know I'm going to enjoy this yeah. and I'm interested in this. And I feel like people who read the books and then went to watch the movies, you know, they may have had, a, oh, I wish it would have included this, yeah. but they know they loved the story already. That's why they were going to the movies where yeah. the first time I was like, okay, you know, the first like three, I'm like, okay, we're watching this as part of a channel commitment, you know, oh, these aren't so bad. And then five really sucked me in. So when I went yeah. back and watched them again, there was just that much more enjoyment. But this movie, even the first time around, I really loved. I thought it was a phenomenal movie, an integral part as far as like these kids learning magic, learning what they have to do to defend themselves against a very imminent threat in Voldemort. Yeah, and, and we were all in. I think I think we oh, can all that echo point? that. Oh, yeah. By then, it was... It was game. It was game on. Let's go and let's get and it in done. In July of 07, 9.42 at the box office, yeah. millions, and the budget was between 150 and 200. And at that point, Daniel Radcliffe was 18, and uh, Emma was 17, and our buddy Rupert was 19. So okay. like they're really c coming into their own as yeah. adult and adult actors and actresses. Yeah. So. And then we had the great mystery oh, that boy. we all tried to figure out through the whole thing. Who was the half blood Who prince? Who was the half, half blood prince? Blood prince. Now, Severus uh, Snape. Come on. This one, we just kept on throwing we, guess we after all guess. Kept trying to figure it out. And it, like I said, guys, I, I said it before and I'll say it again. This is the one that kicked the story off to the finish. And who was the Half Blood Prince? What were all the roles? We we saw a little bit of uh, backstory with Alan Rickman's character. I believe it was in this one, was it not? There was some a little earlier as well. Okay, but, yep. but yeah, then we, we saw this, and uh, boy, I tell you, this one just picked right up where the last one left off, and it was game on. And I absolutely love this one. Yeah, if I had to pick one that I did, you know, everybody has their favorites and their ones they least like. I would say this was probably the one that I was. Um, the least invested in and maybe because I felt like it was this like transitional story it's like okay like I was so like I mean I was uh, I was like on cloud nine with part five the the order of the phoenix and so this one it f it felt like it was like a, a connector between it was the bridge to yeah, the, the was, final two yep so it was yeah. storytelling but, I, I, you know, I kind of went into it, like, knowing, okay, oh, we're coming up on, you know, in, in Deathly Hollows, it was part one and part two. So, so it was, like, the final. Yeah, the final. Right? Yeah. Like, where if, if part seven wasn't, like, like, let's say they just gave it a different title and it was something else, then maybe I would have enjoyed parts, if that okay. makes sense. Yeah. You know, because I know part seven and eight were, like, one piece of the final puzzle. Yeah. So this felt a little bit more like a transitional movie. Um but I still felt like it was a solid movie. Um, it definitely held its own. And, you know, we learned a lot about Snape, a lot of twists and turns. Mm -hmm. Like, who's the half -like Yeah, we, we were saying that the whole time. We all had our and then you learn. Then you learn it's, it's Snape. And, um, you know, uh, I think, you know, we kind of skimped over in Order of the Phoenix, the involvement of, you know, the Death Eaters and stuff like that. Yeah. They start playing a big role. You start seeing that. Both worlds. You start seeing yeah. that evil isn't just Voldemort like he's got his army and there's symbolism in, in, in that too um, you know I um, I forget if it was uh, and I'm sorry like I said we're, we're going over so much but yeah. I, I forget if it was Half-Blood Prince or if it was Order of the Phoenix where they started like really hunting out um, like started hunting out mudbloods yeah, and people they and, determined is and not people pure. they determined weren't pure bloods yeah. and I think that I don't know if you're not like somebody who's up and up on, on World War II history. I don't know that somebody would have caught that and they would have just thought it was part of the movie. It it made it 
um, uncomfortable in a good way yeah. for me because they they were it, it made it it made the movie serious to me. I'm like I'm like this is substance, and I felt kind yep. of bad. It's like. Like, holy cow, this feels like some Nazi Germany stuff. And I almost did, look, I almost didn't bring up the Nazi Germany stuff. Look, it's a reaction channel. We're all trying to have fun here yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And that's like pretty heavy when you start talking about like Nazi propaganda. But I was so glad that people jumped in the comments were like, no, you were, you were right. That's what it felt that's like she was going to for. all of us. They're yeah. like out, like searching. They're like, and the one girl's like, no, no, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you not, know, I yeah. come from a wizarding family and yep. stuff like that, trying to prove that they were from a wizarding family where in the 30s and 40s like they were more, more in the in the early to mid 40s like they're doing the opposite like they're yep. they, you like you have to no i'm not no, I, I don't have any jewish blood not of jewish yep. descent none and so it was it was heavy and it, it really took the the movies to an adult yeah. place and it was heavy but you know credit to jk again for I, i've said it before and it's the best thing about i think about her writing is that she didn't have to beat you over the head with a hammer to get the point no. across it was there and it was pronounced enough but subtle enough to where you know it's not super obvious like oh okay this is what you're going for jamming it down my throat it's like it's there and you can make the assumption but it doesn't have to be so yeah, heavy-handed all the time yeah they didn't do that oh. and, I, and 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 again you know my experience fully is with these movies and so people who have read the books are going to you know obviously have different experiences with how That's they view true. the movies and I'm not disagreeing that the books are obviously better, but I'm saying the movies were really good. Yeah. So yeah. even with whatever deviation they took from the book, you know, some people like there's movies that you've watched, and like, eh, it was okay for me. And people are like, you got to read the, you got to, you got to read the book. It's it's better. And like, okay, maybe the book is better. But when you think the movies are fantastic, yeah. You know, reading the book doesn't. It's not to change my mind that this is awesome. It's yeah. to add details, but. You know, you're right. They, the, she wrote it in such a manner, and the directors portrayed it in such a manner that it's yeah. getting the lesson across, but not necessarily yeah. just you know sh shoving it down your well, throat. Let's talk about the other lesson though that was in this movie was uh, someone playing some Quidditch and getting on the team as the goalkeeper and ah. uh, getting slipped some uh, liquid luck as it were, as it was by Harry to a good old Ron Weasley, and he goes out and has the game of his lifetime, only to discover. He never had the vial. He never took ingested yep. it at all, and that was all him. Boy, he, that's the one part I really thought they if they skimped on anything in this movie, I thought that was a part that deserved just a little bit more time. And Harry maybe showing Ron to, you yeah, know, he, it, well, it was I, all I, you, I, man. I think, it was you. I think they you got know? the point that was across. Maybe on the book or I, you know, yeah. what the one thing that I did think this was interesting is they further, and they kept doing this. So, and we could probably talk more on it, but I'd have a hard time picking out exact moments like i said i've watched these movies twice um not a hundred times <laughs> yeah so, so a little we're bit, not going to be experts like, yeah you know? but um but you know when you know we really start to see this development between ron and hermione and then when ron becomes you know the Jack. Like, yeah then he gets <laughs> you know he gets in you know he gets in this relationship with this girl you know who who That's, he oh the clinger yeah. remember the clinger yeah, that the was, you know it was funny because yeah, it was like holding the fork and just he's, bending it yeah he's the guy who doesn't have a girlfriend and then he does and then she's too clingy yeah. and he kind of wants to get her off her and it was just another one of those like okay i've I've been yep. there, yep. you know, and also the kid. Like it felt fun. like it was out of an '80s movie. Yeah, like they they knew enough to sprinkle in those little details, so you weren't just like, "Oh God, this is so negative and heavy." This it was, whole time, man, it was, they but worked it, it, it in. They did such a good job of making everything relatable. Yeah, you know, and it's like some movies. It's like, yeah, they just don't feel like the teenage romance stuff is relatable, yeah. or if it's like, it's just like, okay, this is cheesy or overdone or underdone. Mm -hmm. And it's like every like interaction they had between like th these kids and stuff like that when it was romantic, when it was friendships, um, really felt legitimate. And I, and, and I think that they did yeah. a good job with that. And to keep the continuity that they had with having different directors through a number yeah. of the movies. I mean, you know, they, they changed directors quite a bit. And I think it's uh, it's a real statement to not only the source material, but all the the crew and everybody involved, the writers, to kind of maintain that continuity where 
if you would have told me that it was the same director all the way through all the movies, I would have been like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it makes you sense. Know? But, you know, and, and it was brought up a couple of times in the reunion show. The, the reunion show, if you... <laughs> If you're watching this, I'm guessing you've watched the reunion <laughs> show because the people, the, yeah. if you've made it this, this far, far. <laughs> you're a hardcore Potter person. Yeah. But the reunion show really explained why they switched directors. You know, the first two, that guy, um, and I, I don't know if they detailed it. Some of the videos I watched detailed it a little bit more. Yeah. But they said the, the guy who did the first two, that was like his thing. He had a knack for making great kids' movies. Uh, um, makes sense. And that was kind of his forte. Yeah, they all had strengths. And they all had strengths. You know, the guy who made the, the Goblet of Fire talked, uh, you know, in the reunion about, you know, some of his strengths and, and why he would have done that. And so they did a really great job if you're... Like I said, if for some godly but unknown when they reason, were getting older, then David Yates took over for five, six, and uh, both parts of seven. Yeah, yeah. So, so then when they got to be adults, yeah. Yeah. So it, they did a good job of, and in, in, in most scenarios, like you'd get pretty worried if, like, oh, they got a new director. Like, and we've all seen that happen in other movies where, yeah. oh, we're gonna do another one and a new director, and it's like. <laughs> you know, and you're like, well, that was a dud. It's just a shake of the day. Yeah. But uh, they did a good job yep. with this one. And like you said, it was it was a good transition into Deathly Hollows, um, the seventh installment. And, you know, seven and eight, you know, I think we can kind of talk about it together. Yeah, um, I think you almost have to. It you was, know, the, it was one, as far done. as I understand, and Andrew, correct me, I shouldn't say as far as I understand, I'm 99.9% .9 positive. I, I I hesitate with some of the things I say because I don't want to get busted, but then again, I, 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 need to, I need to sit back and remember, like, it's it's interesting, like, the, the people watching the Potter videos on YouTube aren't, like, internet assholes, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, yeah, they'll politely correct very you. Very helpful. Yeah. They'll politely like, correct you or say, oh, hey, actually, it was this and this. So sometimes, like, being, like, a, a reactor and putting these videos out, I worry, like, oh, I'm going to say it yeah, wrong. Yeah, say then, the wrong thing. I mean, yeah. we, we've reacted to videos and, like, said the wrong thing. You should see, yeah. like, Dave or Quinn sometimes. Like, oh, 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 no, you got that wrong. Or we'll correct each other. Yeah. But the Deathly Hallows, the book was one um uh i believe the book it was just yeah. harry potter and the deathly hollow and i just remember a ton of hype when this when this one was coming out and about how and is like i said as much as i wasn't into the harry potter universe i do remember just a ton of hype with this coming out and a lot of people talking about how how dark it was and how much more adult it was and is this gonna be you know okay to show for kids and stuff and it was a big deal when it came out that much i remember yeah deathly hollows as one book came out in 07 yeah you know if we do split it up a little bit i mean part seven was like the the first part of their journey they're breaking off they're yeah. really finding themselves. They're out looking for these horcruxes, so they're not the, battling. The magic tent. They're not. Yeah, yeah, they're not the magic tent. It's just a small awesome. tent, and it opens up. Yep. You know, they're not battling Voldemort directly yet, but they're setting themselves up out looking for these horcruxes. They have to find these clues. They have to find their way, believing themselves. Uh, the, the, them the dull, the the dull Patronus. Yeah. With the mom. I mean, that was powerful stuff. The one thing that I really did like about um, the first part in part seven is they showed um, tension between friends. Yeah. And these are a group yep. of people who have had, you know, your, you, you had your normal teenage tensions, right? And Goblet of Fire and some of the other ones that normal teenagers get where it's hormonal stuff. This showed real tension. Now, of course, we can talk about because the Horcruxes were around and what that yep. does to people. Yeah. But it showed real tension among, you know, young adults that that happens, you yeah. know, and you, you have disagreements, you have fights. There's times where you just want to, you know, walk away from each other or, you know, get into a, a, a duke it out. Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're friends and you, and you have to come back together to help each other. And, and that's what we saw. And th this this first one was was a setup, but it had so much substance on its own. Yeah. And, you know, and especially the tension for younger people in what is essentially a war, you know, because that's what they're in against yeah. Voldemort. And so we kind of see the tension that they have. Maybe not everybody's on board with the ideas, so you could almost kind of equate that to, like, soldiers in battle not being 100% of what the, the best way to do the mission is or whatever. We saw a little bit of that. So, again, that 
the, the tension we saw in the earlier movies and the, the little bit of shoulder knocking we might have saw, that was nothing compared to what we had I mean, to deal with in these. You ended up, have Ron, you ended up having Ron leave. Yeah. Like, exactly. leave and get yeah, so upset he just that he bailed. left. And you could say, like I said, the horror cruxes, but still, it was still enough for him to get cheesed enough that he took off. Yeah. And and the uh, the time that passed during this movie i don't know if we if we touched on that enough on, on the reaction when we originally did it but to my understanding they were out for months you know looking for these horcruxes staying in the oh, tents, yeah. Yeah. having to constantly yeah. keep moving constantly like constantly put on the spell of you know yeah that was visibility and, you know the the wear that that would take on your on your mental facilities and, and physically just just wearing you out of constantly being on the road, constantly looking for these items that you have to get, uh, was definitely a huge deal. I mean, it was one. smart what they did too. They released it in November of ten, and then July of eleven. So within <laughs> within <laughs> eight months, yeah, they yeah. had yeah. them in nine seventy seven at the box office, and then one point three billion at the box office God. for the goal. big finish. Yeah, yeah, so, the, and the, the finish was was phenomenal and that for me you know i've i've referenced lord of the rings a few times and not that they're a comparable movie but just in in the in the fantasy scape of things mm -hmm. um you know one of the things that i had loved about that i loved about a lot of my old movies whether it be braveheart or gladiator um the 300 or these massive like battle scenes mm -hmm. and we felt like we got that with part eight the huge shield around yeah. the hogwarts and you had all the death eaters just throwing their magic at the shield and just massive destruction and it felt like a legit battle scene you know quinn it's interesting that you that you bring up their age because i guess it's something that i hadn't um, really thought about that much. I mean, of course, there's the theme that they're young, but this this is essentially what they're doing. You're right; they're going to a war mm -hmm. with a bunch of really evil people, and I and I don't know if um, if this was meant to, um, you know, kind of mirror World War II. Some people thought, hey, it's you know mirroring Star Wars. There's a handful. Like when you go watch all the YouTube videos, there's a handful of different this takes after this i mean some people uh you know I, I read some place where they're like oh she just copied lord of the rings basically <laughs> um in the stories which i i don't i don't feel at all like no, you can look so. you can take stories and like tie together similarities of course i brought up um you know star wars a few times yeah you yeah. know with where i felt i felt like voldemort was going to be like the vader and or, or and tell the harry to join the dark side yeah. you know but it's all about like how far do you want to go back there's the mythological story of the hero going into the cave finding him uh, finding himself coming out different and defeating evil that's a story and a theme that's been used for centuries so it's like how far do you want to go back in saying that somebody is taking liberties with a story and borrowing from one or another you know it's it, it's all relative and and maybe you could make a connection there but i think uh just real quicker i think that the Harry Potter series definitely stands on its own, and I I don't think I, I don't you can, you can just say it borrowed from things, and it, and it yeah. probably did, but it's I, still it's still interpreted in a different yeah. way, and you still have to bring that to life and bring it into your own words yeah, and your own actions. Good is always going to fight evil. Yeah, this is, you know, you know, when I'm watching these videos that are talking about it borrowing, and look, you can make your connection. Well, it borrowed from this movie, and and here's the connection. What do you, what, do you, what every time somebody does a good versus evil and a main bad guy and a hero? Yeah, you're, you're gonna call it borrowing. Oh, it borrowed from, it, you know, it borrowed from this story where you had the, the young hero. It borrowed from this story where you had the bad guy. It borrowed from that. Zombie it borrowed from this yeah, guy where you had like the the you know the 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 order of the phoenix, the good group. It, but you know, I mean, yeah. you know, what, look, it's like, where do you draw the I, line? I could probably make a movie about how Harry Potter. Uh, mirrored you you brought up robin hood prince of thieves earlier well robin hood was the young prince who went off to battle and that's him going to hogwarts and then yeah. you know learning to battle and then he came back and he became noble and you you know the, the sheriff of nottingham, the, one. the sheriff of nottingham which ironically <laughs> enough was alan rickman <laughs> Um, nice. was was Voldemort and his henchmen were the Death Eaters and, you know, all yeah. the, the merry men of the woods were all the other kids at Hogwarts, you know, and it's like, you know what, you can go on and on and you can make yeah. whatever. Look, I, you're, you're never going to 
I'll, I'll fight over it. I'll fight over Harry Potter. <laughs> You're never going to tell me that this movie wasn't awesome. And, and you can make all the videos you want saying material was taken from other. Yep, Star Wars. I'm sure you can take it from some Lord of the Rings. But this is a brilliant series. And, um, and, and I think it's unlike anything else. So it may have come after other stuff. But I, I look and I, God, I hate this word. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But haters harry potter haters <laughs> look i i look i my, my brothers probably won't like this either although my brothers don't like like the later star wars they'll they'll i think harry potter is better than star wars which i'm sure i'll get roasted i'm not a star trek person so i can't really comment but whatever i think harry potter is a, a more substance than just about every multi-film movie there is so they may have taken stuff from other movies, but guess what? They take it, and if they did, they made it better. So, Except the Fast and the Furious. Oh, oh. God. The Fast and the Furious. <laughs> Dom is Dumbledore, and Paul Walker <laughs> was the young Harry, Harry coming yep. and learning uh, yeah, see. the race yeah. scene, and Charlize Theron is Voldemort. I don't know, man. <laughs> but Whatever. The one thing that I want to say about the Deathly Hollows Part 2, and then there's obviously a ton of fan theories on this, was who was the guy who stood up at the end against an overwhelming force of evil in his face? Oh. Who did it but Neville? A guy who was kind of understated, well, was understated in the earlier yeah. movies, and wound wound up being what could be portrayed as as a massive hero at yeah, the end and we'll talk a little bit about yeah. more about neville when we talk about character development here yeah. in a little bit um which you know is oh. is really important but i look i, I love the way it ended oh, um we thought fight harry, at the end look we thought harry was over he came back um everybody around him was brave they there was no surrender they were just you know it showed it showed just incredible bravery among these kids and you know how they knew they were stacked up against the odds yep. and and they just kept going um uh i i don't want to over you know skip over the importance of the deathly hollows um the cloak of Invis invisibility the wand yeah and, that, and that whole stone, story was outstanding with the animation and back to life and showed like his tear to show that he was you know, he did one thing, and then was asked to do another, and then showed that he because he always loved the mother. So yeah, you know, and even um, you know, it was an interesting thing that I that I want to bring up um, that I would have never caught is so over and over throughout the Potter series, people say you have your mother's eyes, you have your mother's eyes, you have my mother's eyes, and when Alan, Alan Rickman is passing, he he says to Harry, "Look at me." And people said that was him basically saying he wanted to look in Harry's mother's eyes. Oh, one last one time. One last time. That's God. Awesome. There was, there's like, you. There's so the, much stuff. The comments Man. you guys have left in just the videos. Too, you have your eyes. Yeah, and everybody just kept saying you have your mother's eyes. And um, that was a big thing for Alan Rickman. And um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this. There's some things where you might be like, how come you guys aren't talking about this? But, you know, we. We tried to break this down as much as we can into yeah. sections and um, and, um, and try to keep a reasonable far, if if, timeline. Yeah, as and well. keep a reasonable timeline. But we wanted to like break it down instead of just going on some like long talk about the movies. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, the the way it ended, you know, Harry having this battle with with Voldemort mm. and, and finally winning, having the big um, wand battle at the having end. the wand battle. He gets rid of the wand at the end, yeah. so nobody could have that power, even though he was now the true owner of the wand yep. and he had the invisibility yeah. cloak. We don't know for sure. That was the one thing I never got the true answer on. Is is the invisibility cloak that they talk about in is the hollows? The one? I'm gonna go ahead and that assume is, it was the one that his dad has because yeah. we saw earlier on. When he first got the inv invisibility cloak, it's noted that, I don't know if it was Hermione or Ron said, it's very rare, but they didn't, yeah. like, not know what it was. So they just said it was rare. Yeah. So that's the thing. It wasn't like, oh, my God. That's the one and is, only This is a one cloak. of a client. Yeah. So it said it was rare. Um, but um, there's some, some theories, and this is one that, um, you know, we'll get into a little bit later about, you know, who he got the, the, the cloak from and things like that. Yeah. But I really thought... Um, it was an amazing ending to the whole story. Yep. Um, there was loss. There was tragedy. Um, we saw, you know, yeah, one of the, I mean, we they saw lost one, a ton of we students. We saw one of the yeah. Weasley twins pass, yeah, who was a, a major character. I forget if it was Fred or George. 
Um, I mean, we saw the students. We saw um, the professor who tur- uh, um, the professor who turned into the werewolf that everybody was yeah. very invested in. I mean, gosh, at the end, so there was a there the was bodies were stacked. Yeah, there up. was a lot and, uh, of law. Yeah, Helena Bonham Carter, you know, coming in, going rough house too, you know, and just she took out a few people. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was just a really epic yeah. end to the story. Um, and uh, I, I thought they did a phenomenal job, and and in the end, good overtook e- evil. Yeah, um, I think somebody had a comment that they talked about in a lot of British authors and children's stories. That there is there is a lot of death. I mean, not a lot, but they do have death in they their talk stories. About death. And the, somebody in the comments said that. Whereas I think you know, being American, maybe our stories are a little bit more uh, kid friendly, as I guess it were, or we don't always hit on that but that was something that somebody ah, brought yeah, up sure. with with jk you yeah. know having her background so that makes sense yeah so the next thing we were going to jump into was was character development um you know and i'll i'll keep this one pretty short i mean do you want to just pick one character that you like and um, you, like you know kind of just touch on it? you know i mean i think harry's um strong point was he you know, he learned um, how powerful he was and how to manage that. He still had, I think the one thing about their character development with all the um, all the people is that, you know, and maybe, maybe I'm just going to lump everybody into one group and say I think that they had very real character development that young people go through, mm-hmm. learning to believe in yourself, um, learning that you have to trust yourself, learning that you have to trust put trust in, in those around you. Um, you know, Harry at first didn't think he was anything special and he doubted himself and all of a sudden he's the one teaching. Yep. And, you know, there was a lot of times that, you know, Sirius had to remind him, Dumbledore had to remind him of who he was. And even though we were told from the beginning he's the chosen one, he still needed reminders. Mm-hmm. Um, her, Hermione, her character development, I thought, was was not as drastic because I thought she, she was the astutious one. She was the responsible yeah, one. Right from she the was jump. right from the get-go. Yeah. She definitely became more confident, but she was confident from the get-go. It was part of who she was, very astutious. Um, so I don't know that Hermione's character development, she was the mature one from the start. Yeah. yeah. Um, you and know, even as an actress, we saw yeah, that on yeah. the 20th anniversary. She, it was like watching an adult in like a ten year old body yeah. when you watch so, so, so yeah. I don't know that there was as much character development yeah. there and I think the writers know look, we all know it takes men what men mature at what sixty years old and women mature by like twenty three. <laughs> um <laughs> But um, so I, I think that her character development, she was an incredible, and I don't want to take away from her character because I think she was oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, I think she becomes more aware of her emotions and how she talks to Ron. You know, there's that tension the whole time, but I think she becomes more aware of herself in that regard. Um, Ron's character, I think it's just a matter of confidence, um, you know, um, learning that, you know, he's going to have to, you know, make his own mistakes and step up and make decisions. The the biggest character development for me in the whole story, and I think he's really, I'm going to say the unsung hero is Neville. And I yeah. think, I think, yeah, I've watched some, some great videos on Neville and, and I know Harry Potter's the main character, but when you want to talk about just a phenomenal character in any movie, um, Neville Longbottom, and and we'll talk about that a little bit more when when we touch on the lessons. But I thought it was really good character development. Um, some of the older characters, um, you know, Hagrid, Dumbledore, Severus Snape, you know, they were kind of already in their roles. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, one of the interesting things about Dumbledore is he starts to see Harry. Um, I, I think he always has a, a father figure to Harry, but we see him start to trust in Harry's powers and now you're you're my ally and we're going to work alongside each other so Dumbledore um, has to let Harry make his own mistakes Mm -hmm. and he has to trust Harry to be like his sidekick so there's definitely character development there Um, I think it was hard for Snape to be around Harry so much knowing that he was in love with his mom yep um, and I then think how that he got tough. picked on by his dad. Yeah, yeah right? and then his, and look, he was in love with his mom thing. and his dad picked on him. That's tough. It was like, here's here's the thing, and this is like real relationship talk. If you were in love with somebody, let's say you had like your high school sweetheart, right? And college sweetheart, and you're in love with them, in love with them, in love with them. And then they get with somebody else and have a kid. Like, that's awkward to look at that kid if you feel like 
that should have been that your child. should have been you, and you're like, the kid's that, almost throwing it in your face. The, the, yeah, and, and you have resentment towards a child who's never done anything to you oh. other than uh, that Live. should have been our <laughs> child, yeah. and instead it's his child. Yep. And so it's a, like a touchy thing to talk about, but it's 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 a yeah, real I can see that. it's a real thing. So I think there was ca- great character development with the kids, as well as some of the adult main characters. Um, watching Ron's parents become more father and mother mm-hmm. figures yeah, over the kids there. as they grow, and 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 trying to look out for them. That was a, a great theme all the way through. Was how incredibly loving and caring Ron's mom was for Harry, knowing his situation, but. I think they did an amazing job with the character development from the start to finish. Yeah, yeah, the one and, and you really pretty much nailed it on there. The one thing, uh, the one character I'll say that was a bit unsung. I mean, obviously everybody talks about Neville. I think uh, Malfoy. I thought you know started off as the the greased back yeah. hair yeah, uh, kind of bully, and then at the end you really saw that he was a product of his parents and what he was around. So it's like. What else would you expect and him to be? And he knew what he was doing was wrong at the end, and he struggled with it. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I really liked his his story. I mean, he pretty much told his dad how he felt at the end. Well, I was going to say, know? like, his dad, how his dad was, like, this clean cut, had the hair slicked back, but by the seventh movie, he had the 5 o'clock shadow. Yeah, you could tell it was wearing on him. Yeah. He, you, know, he actually, he, you know, he had the yeah. fear. Of yep. of uh, of Voldemort as well, but yep. he would still do his bidding. And like, even remember when he gives him his wand and Voldemort's like, "Not good enough." And he's like, "I swear, that's what it yeah, was. It's the best it was." And, yeah. and so, like, he got to see him change yep. up too. And then, uh, you know, obviously everyone's going to touch on Neville, but I think just on the basis of just, you know, like I said, you strip it down and take it away from being a wizard. It's just them growing up becoming teenagers and young adults they just happen to have to save the world yeah, and stop this great evil, evil. Yeah. so like you see they did a great job at having everyone do character development because there was like ron who was the kind of the p- little eat whatever i mean he still did eat whatever but he wouldn't do anything wouldn't do his yeah. homework always looked for the shortcut shortcut kinda. and then he came through in the end that he was actually you know a perfectly fine wizard yeah. like he started he started actually trying, it seemed, when, you know, Harry was training everyone. He started yep. listening and started doing his best. There yeah. was a deleted scene. It's funny that you bring up Ron not studying and doing his homework. There was a deleted scene, not one that we're going to be watching here in a little bit, where he's with Hermione and Harry, and they're talking, and uh, Hermione says, what, um, Ron, what are the ingredients for a forgetfulness potion? And Ron says, I don't know. <laughs> and he, he didn't know. He said, what are you going to do when it comes on the test? He goes, I'm just going to copy you. And she's like, no, you're not. And it was just this funny moment. What are the ingredients for the forgetfulness potion? I don't know. I forgot. It's perfectly done. Yeah. yeah. But, the, you know, the one thing they did, uh, I think, to kind of wrap up the, the character development is that the the people behind the casting did such a good job of – I mean, it's tough because you don't know what a kid's going to look like in 10 years, yeah. you know, what they're going to grow into. So it was a big risk there. You, you hope you have an idea. Yeah, but to pick actors and actresses that looked – everybody looked so very different and were very unique. It was as bad as I am with names in a lot of movies. It was really easy for me to be like, oh, that's them, that's them. I know what they're like. It it, it helps their personalities come through when you do such a good job of casting. So I thought that that was really big with this movie. And then they talked about in the 20th uh, anniversary how they didn't have they didn't have Harry until like the 12 o'clock hour. So yeah. that was yeah. kudos to them for you know doing a great job. Yeah, of who they great, picked. Good, great point with the casting. Yeah. Um, so one of the 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 biggest things and this is definitely gonna be my favorite part of the round table and you guys saw me really hammer this home is the lessons that were taught mm. in this series and it, it, for as entertaining as these movies were i think that's the key point and i think that's the biggest thing that sets harry potter apart for me for other movies is the these continuous lessons and heavy heavy lessons and um and Quinn brought up like they're not in your face but they're out there enough like hey pay attention to this you know it's not it's subtle enough to where you know like I said it doesn't have to be hammered home but they they want you to get the point and so again I went back and watched all these movies kind of took notes and just wanted to break down some of my Mm -hmm. 
favorite lessons. So I don't know. Maybe I'll go through what mine were for each movie, or sure. I can I can touch on each one and see if you yep, guys I want to jump in. I think I got in. mine on on the phone here. Um, so in um, and this hit me really hard. And if if anything in this series hit me hard, this was probably it. And it's it's funny that it came out of the first one because when I watched the first movie, I was kind of like meh, whatever, right? You have the um, the mirror in the first one, the mirror of Eriset in the first one. And I, I can't believe I didn't think about this more. So Dumbledore talks about it shows what you want. It, it's what you want most in life, what you want most. And it was, it was emotional for me um, to watch it again and think about this. Harry looked in that mirror and it, it shows you what you want in life, right? And all he wanted was his mom and his dad. Yep. He wanted to be with his family again. And you don't you don't think about that, right? Like when you see it, you're like, okay, whatever. And Ron goes and looks in the mirror, and Ron wants to be like this Quidditch all-star. Like, yeah. I want to be a champion and known worldwide. It riches. And it wasn't until I went back and watched it again, and I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, talk about like... And, and not to dog on Ron, he wasn't doing anything bad, but talk about the things that we take for granted yeah. in life. I mean, what, what, what do little kids want, right? Like when you're 10, 11 years old, that's the stuff you want. You want to be popular. You want this and you want that. And here you have Weasley looking into this mirror. That's going to show you what you want more in life. And he wants fame and fortune and Quidditch. And Harry just wants his mom and dad back. And it was like, that whole movie seemed like so lighthearted and cheesy comedy and whatever, and I, I didn't take it seriously. And then when I watched that mirror of uh, Erised and, and really let that sink in, like, holy shit, like, this is a kid that he doesn't want the things other kids want. Like, think about what yeah. you wanted when you were Well, like, he had 11. all the money and didn't even care, really. Yeah, he had a you whole, know? you know, and, and it's yeah. like that hit me, that hit me really hard, like, um, and I think the lesson is that, is like, you know, you can... You know, in this in, in this life, you can have riches, you can have money, you can have fame, you can have all that stuff. But man, family is like what? Don't don't get don't don't get fast and furious on my emotional moment. Um, I, wouldn't dream, I wouldn't dream of family. That. Uh, but no, it's 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 everything, and, and it also goes to show like different child experiences yep. like a kid sh like that's what an 11 year old should want right what 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 ron wants that's yeah. an 11 year old hey, exactly. i want to be, you know, be the quidditch player an 11 year old's yeah. most you know for how, how sad is that that he just he just wanted his mom and his dad and um and i thought that was um i thought that was a really solid lesson in like how lucky are we in life if we just have family? And the, and the one thing they hit home the whole movie is how much Harry's parents loved him. Yep. You know, and, and, and how important is it to have, you know, family that loves you? And furthermore, how important is it for you to love the people around you to make other people feel that way? Like be that person for somebody else that makes them feel lucky that they have you in their life. And that was a really heavy part that, I had I not gone back and watched it again and watched it attentively, I don't know that I ever would have caught. And I don't even know if if they meant it to mean that. I haven't seen other reactors or other people talk about that, but it hit me really hard and like here's this mirror it shows you the one thing you want yep. most and i want fame and fortune and blah 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 and harry just wants his parents back. Yeah, it's crazy that such a powerful theme was right off the bat in the first movie. You know, and, and just to kind of to piggyback off what you said, the, the big thing for me was that here you had, you know, Harry and everybody else, they're, they're wizards and witches, they're incredibly powerful. Some of them were very wealthy, Harry was, uh, Malfoy was, some of them weren't, but they, you know, everybody had something that was really unique and amazing. And still, what mattered was. The most important thing in this world are other people. I've said that before and I'll say it a million times. You know, everything is going to lose its its enjoyment or its pleasure. You can drive a Lamborghini 100 miles an hour down the highway, 200 miles an hour. After a while, it's just going to be another car because things and money don't have personalities. They don't grow with you. You can't interact with them. They're not 
important at the end of the day. And I thought that what this showed was how to defeat the evil, they all had to work together. They all had to, you know, realize their friendships and, and Harry obviously wanting his family. It just, it just beats home a, a topic that I don't think a lot of people think about in a world of, you know, consumption and everybody's got to have the latest and greatest, that's not going to make you happy. What makes you happy is is people and family and and to me that's that's what I loved about this movie and, and how when people work together they can do amazing things. Uh to me the good lesson is it's actually it happens to be a Neville's speech at the end. You know, where he says well, it doesn't matter that Harry's gone. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah, and I was, I'm, and I'm sorry, I, I was gonna go through like movie by movie and lessons oh, in each one. Jesus. Oh, yeah, I went. I'm sorry, I don't know if oh, I clear. Oh, like, right. I, I'm going way. We're at two twenty three right now. Yeah, yeah, I'll make these. I'll make okay. these. Okay, I no, then I had no lesson from one through six. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't know. <laughs> sorry, I didn't know we ran out of time. Well, maybe, uh, maybe our good friend Dave will chop this up so we have timestamps on it. Um, and I'll keep these. I'll keep these quick. Part two. The lesson I really like is uh, Harry just tells Dobby to sit down. That's it. Oh, have a seat. Yeah, that and, was big. Uh, and Dobby's like, "Oh my God, a wizard has never asked me to sit down." And the lesson I took from that: small acts of kindness. Very small acts of kindness. Dobby made this huge deal. Oh, Harry Potter asking me to sit. And the little things that we do throughout the course of uh, each hour, each day, each month, each year, these little acts of kindness go a long way. And little things that you might not think matter, smile at somebody, tell somebody you like their shirt, hold a door for somebody. These little acts of kindness, that was such a little thing for Harry to do. And it mattered so much to Dobby. And, yeah. and we can take that. Um, I think in part three, when they learned the ridiculous charm, it was this great representation of the things that we fear the most sometimes are just in our head. Yep. And if we can get over that, like they took, what do you fear the most? Oh, Ron fears spiders. Well, we're going to put skates on his legs. Uh, in the mm. book, mm. apparently that the spider just didn't have legs. That's one of the things I remember. Um, Neville's afraid of S S Snape. <laughs> And he, he looks he looks like his he looks clown. looks like his grandma and yeah. I, and I think that was a really <laughs> strong message like the things that we are afraid of the most a lot of times are just in our head and if we can change our perception on that it goes a long way. Yeah, the clown was um, still scary. You know, part four uh, I just talked about you know even though it's a world of magic and wizards and stuff how relatable the dance was and that you know everybody goes through with this it doesn't matter whether you're a wizard whether you're rich like Harry whether you know you come from maybe a, a family with less like uh, Iran you know Malfoy like seemed non-existent in the the whole dance thing yeah. you know you think you know he would just, be just with the slick table with the slick back hair you think he'd be <laughs> yeah, getting the yeah, girls or whatever <laughs> um i gotta go to the bathroom so now you can go hang out with the other one you know part five which you guys know um it was huge for me and this is a huge takeaway harry makes other people believe in themselves mm -hmm. oh, we need somebody to teach us and when you go back and you watch that harry encouraging you're doing great this is a really hard one. Oh my god and neville just can't get it right and Harry makes other people believe in themselves. And I think it's one of those things where it's like, like, be like Harry. You know, what a powerful gift to give to somebody else to help them believe in themselves, to teach somebody. And even if you, you believe in yourself, you know, if you're somebody who's got confidence to help instill that in somebody else as a huge gift. Right now, Andrew, you talked about liquid luck. This was my yeah. big takeaway from yeah. the sixth one. Um, just shit, guys. Just, you know. Believe in yourself. Like, how far does that go? He didn't give Ron anything, but Ron felt like, oh, I've got this secret power. And I think in life, and look, this is one where it's it's easy to overstate. Oh, just believe in yourself, and you'll be great. Yep. But like, sh I don't care if you have to go back and watch Harry Potter and just say, well, shit, Ron Weasley didn't have anything, and he went out, and because he believed in themselves, it's like just just believing in yourself goes such a small way. Um, mm -hmm. Part seven. Um, you know, uh, it, it, everybody can be a hero. Yeah. If you, if you're brave enough and you believe in yourself, look, Dobby dying at the end, everybody can be a hero. The smallest person can be a hero. If you step up, I don't care. You don't have to be big. You don't have to be strong. You have to be brave. You have to step up and everybody can be a hero in their own story. Mm -hmm. Um, there's another one. I'm not going to ruin the spoilers, but I think there's a lot of um, a, a lot of lessons about how 
people can can change. Um, and that, that's part of eight. I'm not going to ruin the spoiler. But my last one for part eight, Andrew, is is sent, uh, mirroring what you said, and we can talk about this. I didn't mean to cut you off. Is man Neville? He comes up there and he gives that speech, and basically yeah. for me that was like life goes on, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. not only was it a life goes on, it was to me the best way to honor somebody you've lost is to carry on their legacy. Mm -hmm. And that was the speech that Neville was giving for me. Carry on the legacy of Harry Potter. And Andrew just reminded me of the time. I know we're going long on this. But we went long on all our reviews, and I know we wanted to keep this short. Maybe going long is going gonna, is gonna to hurt our numbers. But to be honest, if you're watching this far... Um, uh, this this isn't just all about numbers for me. This is about tying into the fans that are watching us and stuff. So I'm not going to get um, I'm not going to get bent to number or I'm not going to get too bent on numbers and length. I'd rather go long and have the people who have stuck with us and the people who have shared it get more substance from yeah. us. Yeah. And I know that's not always the best for the YouTube algorithms, but <laughs> I got to be honest with you, like or bent. Potter means more to me than YouTube algorithms, but Andrew, um, yeah, he's, he, he, yeah, well, but, but, but that's, that's kind of, um, that's kind of it for me. Yeah. Um, so, um, well, cause like mine was the whole tying into Neville. I did want to say thank you to Jack has Jack was, if that's her name, who told the, who put in our comments that there is a grave site in South Wales, in the UK, where they filmed Dobby's death scene, and people go there and put rocks. So that's how much he means to people. That's why I was also so hard. Yeah, I thought okay. somebody said it was an I. Somebody I thought posted it was in Ireland. Uh, I thought they said it was in South, South Edinburgh. Wales Edinburgh? Edinburgh. 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 Edinburgh sounds like uh, that's it's definitely the UK. We can yeah. find we well, can find more out about that. Well, the well, thing was, way. mine was yeah. the lesson with like, yeah, is it's the easy like, Neville. It's the easy. It's kind of the easy one, but it's the, even though our leader's gone, we're not going to stop. We're not going to quit. Yep. We're going to stay together. We're going to keep going. And he's yeah, like, cause you got to realize the strength is inside each yes. and every one of those people. It's not all tied to Harry the way the evil is all tied to Voldemort. You take Voldemort away from the evil team, if you will, and they're nothing. But just taking away Harry didn't stop the good. Like he said, was inside he's, everybody. Still, he's still here. Yeah, he's still here in all of us, and he's like, so is Fred, Remus, Tonks, all of them. They didn't die in vain, and because you're wrong, Harry's heart did beat for us, for all of us. It's not over. So that even though you took one of us, you're not going to take all of us. We're going to keep coming yep. at you with all we got. So that's what you have to yeah. live your life. That something can go wrong, someone can be gone, but you still keep going forward. You still keep fighting. You still keep trying. Mm -hmm. to get what you need accomplished, accomplished. Hundred percent. Well, we're um, we're coming up on um, going over um, on the deleted scenes now. I know we're running way long on this, um, so we we got a couple options here. Uh, I can talk to you guys about the deleted scenes and tell you what happens, or we can watch them. Which ones do you want to do? Well, do we? Again, I'm with you, Oak. I don't want to short change our fans. Do we? break this up because no, i was I, also I, saying too if we do the house the house yeah because we got the house quizzes separate, that could be a whole separate video i'm i'm almost wondering if we shouldn't do the deleted scenes and the house quizzes maybe on thursday, thursday. for us because i mean let's be honest i i don't want us to start to feel rushed and to shortchange yeah this, no and that's that's you know? great so why don't, why don't we do that why don't we um and look, we're, we're we're winging this for you guys. And look, yeah. we had a we had a time. And I, no, so this we, is we can, the, yeah, we can like kind of come down and break into an this ending is, of the segment. Yeah, and this is stuff. This is stuff yep. that honestly, guys, so, we would normally talk about in production. But I got to be honest with you, like the people who have watched this far, or like the fans who have like followed along, we feel like we're talking to friends. So yep. I feel like this is okay conversation. So why don't we do this? Why don't we save? Um, why don't we save the watching the deleted scenes yep. and the quiz for our next one? Yep. And we'll just wrap up with um, we'll wrap up with maybe one of our favorite quotes yep. from each yeah. one. That works. I'm gonna that talk on perfect. maybe my few favorite fan theories and keep that relatively short. Right. And like I said, we'll come yep. back, watch the deleted scenes. I have to keep my my spoilers for a little bit keep, longer. Keep that yapper shut. I've oh, good luck. That. So um, we'll uh, we'll look for yeah, the um, 
we'll we'll look for that. But so, so hey, your favorite yep. quote, Andrew. Yep. Uh, I I gotta fuck. I gotta find okay, it. Okay. Well, I've got mine while you're looking here. Um, and 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 again, this kind of touched on what I talked about earlier. But it's we are only as strong as we are united and as weak as we are divided. And that was Dumbledore. And again, that kind of plays into look. You don't have to have just one guy who's the leader it's it's everybody that it takes to do it and i just felt that that was a great overwhelming theme of the entire series very nicely put together in a short and sweet uh quote by by dumbledore so that was that for me that was my favorite well i guess uh, dumbledore is a good one to go with because mine was it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live so even though your dreams or whatever may not have been, have not happened or come to fruition, you can't forget to still live your life and still have a great time doing it and enjoy everything in your life and remember to live. It's more well, life than work. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, there were so many quotes throughout this entire movie, and I think that ties in to the lessons. So if, like I said, if you've watched this far and you're with us, I'm sure you've seen them all. If not, go Google. Um, I think my favorite quote came from Order of the Phoenix um, when Dumbledore says, indifference and neglect often do more damage than outright dislike. Mm. And, um, and man, is that applicable to so much. It very much uh, has the similarities between, I believe it was Einstein said, the world not be destroyed by those who do evil, but those by, rather by those who sit by and, and do nothing. Um, growing up, my dad... Uh, had something that he said to us, and he said, "Never be a somebody do something person." Yeah, and in so and, yeah, that's huge, man. I don't want to like yeah, my my yeah. dad passed last year. Um, <clears throat> so this this quote from Dumbledore: "Indifference and neglect do as much as is is damage <clears throat> more damage than outright dislike." Um, it made me think of that, and that's probably why it hit home and was my favorite. My dad said, don't be a somebody, do something person. And what it means by that, if you can't catch on, is so oftentimes we see things in life where somebody's being mistreated or, or something bad is happening. And people, somebody, somebody do something. Somebody do yeah. something. And it's like if you're there to witness it and, and, and can muster up the words and you're seeing something where you have to say somebody do something, like – do something. Yeah, you're the guy. Don't ever be a somebody do something person. Do something. Don't sit by. And so when um, when Dumbledore said that, and I, I got to be honest with you, I don't even know if I caught it the first time as much as I did the second time. And it, it just it really hit home. And there's a lot of quotes that hit home. Yeah. I'm not going to start running down them because oh, there's there, a there's, lot. There's like a hundred of them. Easy. But Ron Weasley had a good one. Don't let muggles get you down. There, don't let muggles get you down, <laughs> right? Um, that can be taken as funny or as a, you know. Yep. Regular, so, so those are it. our, our quotes. Yeah. I'm going to real quickly do um, my, I watched all the fan. I think I watched every fan theory um, <laughs> uh, video. Some of my favorite fan theories, the ones that talk about Harry, Snape, and Voldemort are the brothers in the Deathly Hollows. Voldemort, of course, looking for the power with the wand. Harry, that stone, he just wants to bring Harry, or Snape wants to bring Harry's mother back to life. Mm -hmm. He's obsessed with his love. And then Harry um, gets the invisibility cloak, and he's able to live a good life until death. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the fan theories. And some of them say that Dumbledore is death himself. It was a very interesting yeah, fan theory. Uh, a very sad but interesting fan theory that I said earlier on that my brother brought me on to is that everything is a dream and that Harry is an abused child who lives under the stairs the at the Dursleys and makes up this world of wizards and everything to try to distract himself from the things that are happening in his life, which is a very heavy fan theory. Um, uh, there was an interesting one about the reason why the Dursleys were so mad all the time is because Harry was a Horcrux and had part of Voldemort's soul, which I saw one and I'm like, oh, okay. But then pro pro I, going back and watching it again, I noticed um, Professor McGonagall says, oh, I've been watching. Are we sure we want to leave Harry with these muggles? I've been watching them all day and they're the, the, wor the muggles of the worst kind, I think she says. <laughs> so I watched the fan theory about the reason that the Dursleys were so mad is because Harry's a Horcrux, 
But then when you go back and you watch it, and then I watched a f somebody, there's videos of people reverting fan theories as well. So you yeah. have your fan theories, <laughs> like and then people, yeah, yeah. and debunking somebody them. said yeah. debunking them. Well, um, Ron and Hermione were around Harry all the time. And if Harry was truly a Horcrux, and uh, that's the reason yeah. why the Dursleys were being upset. Why would but else? my favorite fan <laughs> theory, my number one fan theory, Rita Skeeter, the journalist for the Daily Prophet, is J.K. Rowling. Oh. The world of wizards and witches is real. We are the muggles. Rita Skeeter, a.k.a. J.K. Rowling, is a failed reporter in the world. <laughs> Just listen. In the well, no, world, no, I'm she is a sense. failed reporter in the world of wizards and witches. And so she takes the story of Harry Potter and writes it as fiction books for the muggles. We're the muggles. We don't see what happens in the world of witchcraft and wizardry. And Harry Potter is a real story. And the only reason that we have it is because Rita Skeeter was a crappy reporter and went rogue. <laughs> Think of, don't let this blow up your mind. We're the muggles. It's real. Speak for yourself. It's, dude. Give me the one. It, it could be real. It could be real. Yeah, it could be it's real. It's crazy enough to work. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just it's, crazy. It's, it's just crazy. crazy enough to work. So that was my yeah. favorite fan theory because clearly we can't prove it wrong. Mm. Is it is it is it crazy enough to where it could <laughs> be real? Yeah. If, you know, some of yeah. these you know what I want is I, I this is my last request. I want the guy who narrates ancient aliens to have a show on Harry Potter fan theories <laughs> and i think that would be the best thing ever isn't it possible <laughs> but that but wouldn't you say it could be <laughs> oh my god so shocking surprise this round table went incredibly long uh, and yeah. we didn't cover everything well what about your favorite fan theory i thought you had a fan oh did you watch the fan theories i i did i uh, i checked right. i had to yeah. check a couple so i if did you'll... not want to go down that rabbit hole oh it's, it's a rabbit so hole yeah, all right it's... everything here he, look Yep. Uh, there is you, Harry Potter YouTube yep. rabbit holes. It's real. Yeah. The the one that jumped out at me because I felt that it would be the big, uh, one of the biggest things is that uh, Harry Potter is now immortal, because we saw him go to that place he went to with Dumbledore and then came back. So, uh, real quick here, just kind of the abridged version here, if you will, is that uh, you know. When prof uh, Professor Trelawney, guys, again, you know me in names. When Professor Trelawney made her prophecy about the fate of Voldemort and Harry Potter, she said, either must die at the hand of the other, for neither can live while the other survives. Most fans focused on the second part of the prophecy, understanding that it mean that eventually they would have to kill each other. But the first part of the prophecy brings up uh, an interesting point. Sorry, guys. Again, this live TV, you know. Uh, we're understanding one of them must die eventually, but the first. Oh, okay. If both Harry. Sorry, guys. If both Harry and Voldemort must die at each other's hands and Voldemort is now dead, does that now mean that Harry is now doomed to an unwanted life of immortality? And what about the whole scene where Harry dies and then comes back to life? That's what I had big questions about, which I, I didn't think were explained very, very well. And Voldemort used his killing curse. He actually killed his own Horcrux, an unintentional fragment of his own soul that was within Harry's mind, not Harry himself. Just thought that was an interesting uh, idea and that it would be a heavy burden if Harry was immortal. But he, age, he ages. ages. Well, yeah. you can you can age and still be immortal. Yeah, Wolverine he, started out as a young kid and yeah. then got older. Oh, you're right. Wolverine is that Wolverine. Yeah. yeah. Wolverine. Again, uh, so interesting fan series. So we're gonna we're gonna come back. We're gonna get we're gonna back come to all we're this. gonna come back. We, we've only scratched the surface. We should have known. Gonna, we should have known one session known, wouldn't this, be enough. No, no. In in all yeah. reality, look, anybody who's still watching this, not to shortchange them, is um is obviously a hardcore fan. And we could obviously, if it wasn't like, God, it's like, <laughs> it's, mid, it's midnight. 
<laughs> it's, 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 we all we all have blank jobs, and it's it was it was that butter are, beer that held us up three, in the beginning. Uh, we butter are three beers. grown men watching uh, Harry Potter almost midnight. Um, but no, it's uh, it's it's pretty phenomenal um, that uh, that we got to go on this journey with you guys. And we knew this would run long, uh, not this long, and still have more to go. <laughs> Don't but worry. Yeah, we have still a little bit. We'll come on, back. Yeah. Like I said, we'll come back. And it'll be fun. We'll watch the deleted, uh, yeah, scenes. deleted scenes. Or you know we'll what? Maybe we can do, maybe we'll we do, can the do quiz. this. Maybe we can do this. Maybe we can do a deleted scenes follow-up. And then, you guys from, uh, you know what we'll do? It'll be our last ride. The quiz. Our last, <laughs> the last go. Terry Potter <laughs> ride. We're going to extend this ride by a couple more videos. I'm probably going to come back. You guys want... Drop a comment not, below if you want to see the. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna come up with like my own fan theories. But everything's oh, already no. been done, but oh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but once again, no, I'll do them by myself. You guys won't have to sit through my eight-hour fan theory. But then, <laughs> but then, <laughs> all right. Once again, yeah. guys, um, we we yeah. we. You know, we, I won't drag it out too long because there's gonna be more. But we just can't thank yeah, we, everybody enough. We blame for, you for this. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we, for 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 watching all the comments, yeah. joining along, um, you guys have been great, and uh, I guess we're gonna have a little bit more Potter comments. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're still not done yet. So for the Appleton Oak, Mason Quinn, I'm of course the answer. Good night, pals.